Study unit three is the introduction to negative feedback. So in this study unit, you they teach you your basic configurations for negative feedback and how this can increase or decrease the output and input resistance of your amplifier. You use negative feedback to stabilize your amplifier and if it's done wrong, uh, things can go terribly wrong and oscillations can happen and instability. But those are things that we'll discuss in the fourth set unit. So there are four types of configurations. There's series shunt, there's shunt series, series series, and shunt shunt. So the way you identify your loop topology, whether it's a series or it's a, whether it's a shunt, you need to satisfy either one of two conditions, right? So the first condition is that you can draw a loop, a loop that contains your, your source or load it must contain your feed forward and your feedback right and the second condition is that you must find a node that contains all of these three so when you have a loop you it's a series configuration and when it's a node it's a parallel it's a shunt configuration right so you've got when it comes to the input it's actually rather quite easy to see whether it's a series or it's a shunt your input only varies in two ways So these are the two different types of inputs you'll get. So it's easy when you've got your voltage source, that's a series. And when you've got your current source, that's a shunt. Right? So yeah, that's how that is. So these are the steps that you take um, when you encounter a feedback network. Your first step would be to identify the feedback, topo the feedback topology and the type of beta network. And then the second would be to characterize the feedback network, finding the values of beta R, I, B, and R, O, B the input and output resistance of the beta network. So as soon as you characterize your feedback network, to find your input and output resistance, you either shunt, you either shunt or you series the input and the output, right? With a series shunt like this, you would to find your input here, you would short this side because it's shunted, that side you short it. And when you're looking for this side, the uh, the output resistance, you would sever it. And yeah, that's 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 how you find your input and output resistance of your beta network. And then after finding those resistances, you move them up into the feedback network. So, for example, with this feedback network, uh, since we have a series shunt, your network would look something like this. You have a shunt output. So that's R. So... 
looking at this network, the way you would load it is that you had your RI there and here because that's because it was a series and then you have your RO in parallel with your load here RL right this was series series so um with this voltage amplifier what it would have looked like is no. So the way you would load your your um your series shunt is that the way your series shunt looked that you've got an R of O there. Oh, that. So your loading would work like this. On this side you've got a series. So this is where your R input of beta would go and your R output of beta would go there. So then after finding your input and output um, resi resistance of feedback you go back to this table and you use these formulas to find the new input and output resistance of your entire feed for and feedback amplifier so that's how that is basically how you do your analysis of these feed forward and feedback resistors. More examples will be done in the next video where there will be an example of series, 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 shunt, shunt series, and shunt, shunt, and it will and it'll be in depth of each type of the topology. When we consider the output, the same rules apply, right? So right now i'm going to use a uh, more practical example a whole op amp so if you've got an op amp that looks like this r2 r1 Okay, let me let me really draw that with the plus minus, right? So when we look at this loop, obviously by seeing that there's a voltage source, we know that the input is series. So you input is series and for our output we have to now ask ourselves can we create a loop that includes the load your your output your load and your feed forward or can we find a node so here if we try to find the loop method because here's our output if we let's first uh draw this 
as a small signal representation, writing the op amp in stages. That's your RN. In A V I R out in the R one. So this would be the small signal representation of this this amplifier here, where your input voltage is here. Here's your input resistance to your amplifier between these nodes, and there's R1, here's R1, here's R2, and here's our output resistance of our amplifier with our gain here, right? So we said that we have a loop here going from here to here 
so this loop here includes our source our feed forward voltage and it includes our source here our feed forward and our feedback so here at the output to find um, what topology is at the output we ask ourselves can we create a, a loop that encompasses our feed forward our output and our feedback and the one thing that is not always clearly stated is that your output is always connected to a resistor here there is always some sort of load so here there is actually a resistor here but it's not implicitly stated but we do not create op amps to do nothing they must drive some sort of load so therefore your output your vo here your output is always being referenced to ground so the output is the output that's happening here right so we must either have a a loop that encompasses our output our feed forward and our feedback or we can try a node so if we first try the loop right our feed forward is this part right so a loop would go let me try a different color blue the first loop we try would go like that it doesn't include the feedback so that's not going to work um, a second loop that goes like this does not include our feed forward so that doesn't work so we cannot find a loop that has our feedback our feed forward and our load so now we try to find a node if we look right here at this node we can see that that node has a current that's going this side that's our load current a current that's with that's associated with the feed forward and a current that's associated with the feedback so therefore our output is in shunt and that's how you identify whether it's in series series whether you that's how you identify the topology of your amplifier so now that we have the topology we know that it's a series shunt so with our series shunt we know that we want it's it's honestly very simple when you think about it if you think about the series part you are basically dealing with this right you want your input resistance here to be much larger than the source resistance or yeah that's basically how you look at it and when you've got a shunt you want your input resistance to be smaller than your source resistance because you want all of that current the maximum amount of current to flow down this node so so therefore 